Welcome to Early Signals, episode number two. In this series, we review ideas for AI builders who'd like inspiration for their next side project or application. If you're checking this out for the first time, here's the TLDR. There used to be a saying that every spreadsheet template was a future startup waiting to be born, or every category on the Craigslist homepage was a startup in disguise. Now, it's every prompt that someone puts into chat GPT is a potential future startup. I see these and my spidey sense starts to go off and I think, man, that would be cool if someone built a product around that. Now, you need to do a whole lot more than just productionalize a prompt. However, seeing user energy around a certain workflow is the first notion that you may be onto something. In this video, I'm gonna review my favorite five items that I've found this week. The full list is actually up to 53 different items. Friends and family get this list whenever I find more good ideas in the wild. So if you want this list delivered right to your inbox, there's a link in the description for it. All right, let's jump into some cool ideas. First idea that I'm excited about for this week is around using chat GPT for home automation. I caught this one on Hacker News here. And uh, this fellow, let's see his name. It is Atomic14, not sure his full name here. Um, he showed how he built a plugin for ChatGPT, and this plugin was connected to the different lights within his house. So ChatGPT was able to understand his situation. He could speak natural language into it, and then it would control the lights in his house. Well, this gets me thinking. It's pretty cool how ChatGPT can understand a certain situation and know which best actions to take. Um, and once you hook this up to a lot more than just lights, say you're blind, or your heating or whatever it may be, there's gonna be some pretty cool possibilities that come in there. Um, also some pretty freaky possibilities too because uh, you don't wanna hallucinate with the heat in your house. Um, but anyway, I think there's a lot of potential here and this person is just hacking this together which is such a cool thing because you know there's gonna be a startup around that's gonna be doing this. So this one's awesome. Something else that was cool with this one too is there's a commenter, uh, Kingo55. He actually shared his prompt that he uses for his own home automation in Hacker News as well. And basically consider these factors in setting the primary hue of the lights that he's doing. Here are the different factors and then he asks for the strict output and he gets the output from there. It's really cool to see this prompt being used in the wild. Next idea is actually a tweet that I put out and yes, I'm promoting my own idea, but I think it's that cool. I like it. So it's around natural language product analytics. So I've done a whole lot of product analytics in my career and it's always been pretty easy because there's instrumentation in the product or you can read something from a database. However, doing analytics on top of natural language has also been pretty hard. Now, yes, there's NLP type things out there, but I'm thinking with everyone and their mothers putting a chat product out there, there's about to be a whole lot of product analysts that are gonna get a lot of string data of how chat interactions are going on their product. And I haven't heard yet of a good way to analyze how those chats are going. So for example, what are people asking the most about? Which API calls are we invoking the most? That one's a little easier because you can check server-side API calls. But I think that there's a whole wave of really cool natural language product analytics that are coming around here. And if you're betting on natural language becoming a big thing, which all signs are pointing towards yes, then doing analytics on top of that natural language is gonna be really cool. The metaphor that I use for this one, it's like Looker, but for natural language queries. The next one is around personalized ad generation. So if you think about what's been the bottleneck for ads and generating ads today, it's really around designing the creative and outputting enough creative that you can speak to your audience for it. However, this dude, uh, Esoteric, Esoteric Sean, um, the company I work for uses ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, Eleven Labs, and a lot of other AI tools every day now. We make our own ads and use it to generate scripts, stock photos, fake voiceovers, et cetera, et cetera. This is really cool because if you can start to personalize ads even further and even get a 5% lift or a 3% lift on purchase rates for this, there is an insane amount of money that can be made from doing better on here. Um, I think personalized ad generation is gonna be a really big thing as well. And if this person's doing it with their internal tools, that is just a recipe for someone else to do a better better tool that more people can take advantage of. Next idea, I actually learned about it from a thread that Lauren Marie did, and it is around uh, receipt parsing. So what this person did was, is he spun up a Zapier workflow, which that should be a signal to you that there's an opportunity to automate this just a little bit better. I love Zapier, but it's the hacky way to do something. If you want to productionalize something, there's, there's a, you can do that. Um, so what he did was he passed a receipt through a PDF parser, and the output of the PDF parser was a bunch of, um, gibberish, basically. However, this would be pretty hard to parse in the old days. However, with the rise of language models, they can parse this really easily. And so with the output that you get from here is you can get a lot of structured data about your receipts. Now, are receipts the big one? Yeah, it's gonna be hard to build in the distribution with that because how do you get people to actually use your receipt thing? But I think that taking unstructured data and structuring it 
especially with PDFs, because that's even harder with OCR and everything right now, that's a really cool opportunity for people. The final one is around personalized meditation. So last week we talked about people using chat GPT for therapy. This is along those same lines, but it's a little bit different. So we're all familiar with the um, meditation apps out there like Calm and Headspace. Well, what's the bottleneck with them doing more content? It's writing it out. It is doing the voiceover. Now, what people have been doing here is I've been meditating for a few years now and decided to start building some custom meditations into my routine. I created these with the help of ChatGPT and AITTS. This is pretty cool to put together. Now, it's not a meditation expert here, but my guess is you can get to a pretty solid level, especially if you give examples, and then double that with maybe a fine-tuned model that's really good at doing meditation. You're gonna get some cool resources here. Um, all right, so those are my five favorite ideas for the week. Again, we have this entire uh, Notion doc if you wanna go check out more ideas on here and get the full database. Link for that is in the description. All right, y'all, we'll see you later.